we're at the Chicago Dental Society's annual midwinter meeting and we're hearing more this year about xylitol. We've seen new products here including wow powder, oral rinse, and breath freshener, joining products such as Dr. John's candies and gummy bears. What can you tell us about xylitol and what should consumers know about its use? Xylitol is part, it should be part of an oral uh, hygiene prevention program against decay and looking for a healthier mouth. And many uh, dentists are beginning to recommend xylitol products in order to help their patients achieve those good results. One of the things that's important for anybody to know who's interested in xylitol is that it is a naturally occurring alcohol or sugar uh, that is uh, processed uh, from fruits and trees and it's uh, somewhat uh, appears in the body as well. And its advantage is that it is intensely sweet and can be used in the place of sucrose or regular sugar. Sucrose, regular sugar, is part of the building blocks of the bacteria that cause decay. Xylitol is a sweetener. We get the taste, but it interferes with the ability of the bacteria to uh, continue to grow and then cause us harm. What are some products that you've seen with xylitol that, that are easy for patients to find? There's many xylitol products which are useful and very uh, easy to use. Uh, xylitol comes in gum, it comes in some candies, it comes in uh, an oral rinse, uh, it, it's put in for, as a substitute sweetener for products where we're trying to get uh, things in the mouth that are not, uh, that don't taste bad basically. So it becomes important to read labels and make sure that the product that you're getting, for instance with gum, that xylitol is a major ingredient in it. One of the things that you can look with xylitol gum is that it can be added, but other sugars can be in there too. You want xylitol to be the first, lab first product uh, of sugar on the label. Uh, it takes a certain amount of xylitol to actually get a therapeutic uh, effect where it actually protects the teeth. So just putting it in there just as a little tiny bit isn't going to do you much good. You really need to have an amount and you need to do it continually. For instance, with my patients, if I have uh, kids that are, uh, and because I'm a pediatric dentist, so if I have kids in the practice that have a high decay rate, and they can't brush all through the day or after meals, I will actually have the parents use uh, gum. And there are several brands where you can uh, then use the gum after meals. It stimulates the saliva, which is nature's first defense against decay. And it stimulates the, the uh, uh, gums, it stimulates the saliva, and then you end up with, um, uh, with this uh, substitute against uh, sugar so that the decay can't work as quickly. So with a, with a child who has a lot of decay rate, you want to interrupt the process of decay that continues throughout the day every time the child eats. So now we know that children tend to graze and they tend to eat a lot during the day. So we want to interrupt that process and xylitol, again, is a good way to stop that. Can one ever have too much xylitol? get too much xylitol but you'd have to eat a really large amount. One of the side effects of xylitol in some people can be that they get some gas and it's uncomfortable. But that means that you eat it. Well first of all with gum you're not supposed to eat gum. And for an adult therapeutic level of xylitol is 6 to 10 grams a day. So that's a fair amount. Uh, but most people with a side effect uh, against xylitol uh, where you would get gas and, 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 uh, and some bloating in your belly uh, that's like up to 40 grams a day. So there's a pretty good safety factor built in there against having that, which is the major, um, the, uh, sort of the major side effect that's uncomfortable. Thank you so much.